I always go with my clients to every interview. especially here locally. And I do practice nationwide. So I offer it nationwide if they want to pay for me to go. Um, we are under COVID right now. So there is a way that you can appear by telephone, but you're not there in the room sitting next to the person. And once the officer sees you sitting there, it makes the world of difference in terms of how you're able to represent your client. I always sit and I take notes about everything. I'm always taking notes. I want to know who the officer is. I want to know how long it's taking for us to get called in. There are times that um, a colleague of mine was telling me she was waiting close to three or four hours to be called in. Yeah. And yeah. those are still the timing play things. So um, in South Florida, we have very busy offices. Um, obviously, there's a lot of immigration here. But I have been to New York. I've been to Chicago. I've been to, you know, so many of the other... Um, big hub local field offices, not to LA yet, John, but next time I'm out in LA, we're going to come visit you. <laughs> so um, I want to make sure you know about that. And um, you want to make sure that you have your copy of the Immigration and Nationality Act, the most recent one. So you can, if you are an ALA member, or even if not, this is something that you need. This is your Bible. This is the law as it now stands. Same thing with 8 CFR um, in terms of what are the current CFR guidances. Um, there have been policy memos along the way. Um, one of the most recent one was the USCIS policy memo, memo um, instructing offer officers to give deference to prior determinations. This is huge for us because this means that they're not allowed to re-adjudicate re cases anymore. They cannot go behind what is in the file over there and go back and say, well, you adjusted improperly or you did this improperly. You're at the naturalization level. They can't go behind that file. So you have to make sure that the officer knows. That's why I go in person. Because if you're there on the phone, they may or may not call you. You're allowed to have an interpreter. But right now, it is still by phone only. Um, they do have a system that they can call up. But as, if it's not in the same dialect that your client speaks, it's worthless. And so no, I've, I've had, had that happen. I've had, I've had foreign speaking colleagues contact me and say that translators are translating incorrectly because they speak that yeah. language and they have to call them on that. And with regards to the, the new memo about uh, deference coming back, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously it was a, it was very bad four years where they were redoing all the L's and H's and it causes them to take much longer too. So processing times have gotten ridiculous for work permits yeah. for L2 is H4 is taking like forever and over a year sometimes. So um, that's drastic. Uh, I think they're probably going to still continue on the naturalization and still looking back, especially for marriage cases. Uh, if you had a previous marriage, especially if you filed a case to quit, I'm seeing a lot of those cases being reopened and sent to immigration court for marriage fraud, 204C. Uh, so uh, then that step is so critical. So many people don't hire immigration lawyers. At least I always tell people, have a consultation to go over your history to kind of spot stuff because you may have not mentioned something in a previous B1, B2 or I-485 and it comes to light now. And what you're going to do, you know, maybe it's better you don't file naturalization. And I just, I, you know, I have people leaving like trolls, leaving negative comments. They are just trying to take money. Naturalization is easy. You just fill out a form. Like, yeah, definitely. It's, it's, it's not hard, but yeah. you know, you got to spot these issues and that's why our role comes in. Maybe a simple consultation is all the person needs to get do on their own, but that's so important.